This video was created to help familiarize you with the teardown and reassembly of the Accent M5AF3 manual transaxle and the M5BF2 manual transaxle used in the Elantra and four-cylinder Tiburon. The transaxle on the left is the M5AF3 and the transaxle on the right is the M5BF2. As you can see, these transaxles are very similar in outward appearance. Their similarity does not end on the outside. The design and function of these two transaxles are almost identical. The few small differences will be pointed out at the end of the video. Let's get started. The first thing you want to do is remove the throwout bearing and release fork arm from the clutch housing. Check the throwout bearing for any roughness or play. Its operation should be tight and smooth. Remove the release fork arm by grasping it in the center and pulling it straight out. Next, you'll be removing the shift control cable bracket and select lever shoe with a 12 mm socket. Change to a 10 mm socket and remove the speedometer driven gear assembly. You may have to twist the housing back and forth while pulling outward to remove it. Remove the center case cover bolts with a 12 mm socket. Then remove the center case cover by tapping on the overhanging boss with a brass hammer. With a 3 16 inch pin punch, drive out the fifth reverse shift fork roll pin. Using a center punch or the stake release chisel described in the specification section of the workbook, force the shaft nut staking dimples out of their recesses in the shafts. Remove both shaft nuts with a 36 mm thin wall socket. Remove the reverse synchronizer cone, washer, and synchro ring. With the aid of a pry bar, lift the fifth reverse shift fork and slider off of the shift rail. Using the illustrated gear puller, pull fifth gear off of the output shaft. Now remove 5th gear, 5th gear synchro, and the 5th reverse hub from the input shaft with the gear puller. Remove the reverse light switch from the center case with a 24 mm deep socket. Using a 14 mm socket, remove any shift rail detent caps, springs, and balls that are present on the transaxle you are working on. Remove the reverse idler gear shaft bolt with a 14 mm socket. Remove all of the bolts holding the center case to the clutch housing with a 14 mm socket. Separate the center case from the clutch housing with a hammer and a brass drift. Tap on the protruding bosses until the cases have parted.
Then tap on the boss shown with a brass hammer while lifting up on the center case. Remove and inspect the oil channel from the center case. All of the drip holes should be clean of any foreign material. Now remove the reverse idler gear and shaft. Using a 12 mm universal socket, remove the reverse shift fork assembly from the clutch housing. Now you are going to select third gear to allow the 3-4 shift fork roll pin to be driven through without hitting the gears or synchros. Use your 3 16 inch pin punch. Next, select first gear to allow clearance to drive out the 1-2 shift fork roll pin using the same pin punch. With all of the roll pins removed, you can now remove the shift rails and shift forks. Start with the reverse fifth rail and the 3-4 shift rail and fork assembly. Finish up by selecting second gear and then remove the 1-2 shift rail and fork assembly. Now you will be removing the input shaft front bearing retainer from the clutch housing. Start with a 12 mm universal socket. The tapered Torx screw can be difficult to remove. By striking a few sharp blows with a hammer and a brass drift, the screw will loosen up some and can then be removed with a number 40 Torx bit. Now for the fun part. The input and output shafts must be removed as a unit. The output shaft front tapered bearing hits the differential drive gear if lifted straight up. The trick is to rock the shafts back and forth while pulling up on them. Make sure you pull up on the output shaft in the direction of the magnet in the bottom of the clutch housing to clear the drive gear. Sometimes the differential assembly can be difficult to remove from the M5 AF3 clutch housing. You may have to tilt the case up on end and tap it out with a brass drift. Make sure you don't drive out the differential with the drift against the spider gear pinion shaft. Rest the drift on the end of the differential carrier and tap the drift with a hammer until the differential assembly falls out of the case. Remove the magnet from the clutch housing. Next, you will be removing the shift shaft assembly. Start by removing the interlock bolt from the back side of the clutch housing with a 12 mm socket. Now, the next step is a little tricky and is done mostly by feel. You'll be driving out the control shaft tapered pin with a 3 16 inch pin punch. Line up the back of the tapered pin with the interlock bolt hole. A couple of tries will probably be necessary. Once you have the punch against the pin, keep pressure on it until you can drive it out with a hammer. After you get the tapered pin out, Remove the control shaft by pulling on it while rotating it back and forth. Remove the control shaft dust boot. And finally, remove the interlock assembly components. 
Next, you'll be removing the input shaft seal from the clutch housing with a small pry bar. Use the same pry bar to remove the control shaft seal. Remove the axle seal with the brass drift. Now you'll be removing the output shaft front bearing race from the clutch housing using two ladies foot pry bars. Slide one pry bar shoe in at the oil guide feed recess and the other one straight across. Push the tool arms toward each other and lift the race from the case. Then remove the oil guide. Since you have to press against the oil guide when removing the bearing race, it needs to be replaced. Even if it looks okay, there may be some hairline crack in it that could cause problems later on. Now you're going to clean the sealant off all of the case mating surfaces. The best way is with a stiff bronze wire brush. Simply scrub the surface with irregular back and forth circular motions. Of course, you'll be doing this in your parts cleaning tank with the solvent running all over the surface to help lift the cured sealant and wash it away. The shift rail bushings can be replaced if they're worn or damaged. The best way to remove them is by setting the center case on the right side with a hole behind the bushing. Then simply drive them out with a pin punch and a hammer. To remove the bushings from the clutch housing requires an expensive blind bearing puller or a little grease. Pack the rail cavity of the bushing you're going to replace with some grease. Make sure you fill the cavity up to the bottom of the bushing. Insert the reverse fifth shift rail and cover up the area with a rag. Hydraulic the bushing out by wrapping on the rail with a brass hammer. To install the new bushing, you can use the seal driver handle to drive the bushing in flush with the rail cavity boss by tapping the handle with a hammer.